Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2. The Bible says grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace be yours. It's my prayer that grace and peace will be yours in abundance. The Bible says through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. I will also read Hebrews chapter 4 verse number 16. Hebrews chapter 4 verse number 16. The Bible says this, that uh, let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in time of need. I know there are many people, and you will agree with us and me, that there is a lot of need uh, in this time that we're living in. In this season, there is a lot of need. And especially in our country, we are grappling with a lot of issues. So there is a lot of need, and we need the grace of God. So we are talking about uncommon grace, and I know your life will never ever remain the same once more just call somebody invite them as we get into the word of the lord as we talk about uncommon grace let us pray father we thank you for this time that we have we don't take it for granted that we can gather to just uh, listen to your word we don't take it for granted god that we can worship in our country lord we are praying tonight even as we share your word that lord you will take full control of this meeting use my tongue as a pen of a ready writer and god minister to your people we bless you and we exalt you in jesus mighty name i pray can somebody shout and say amen come on shout and say amen i want you to repeat this in faith say i have uncommon grace say it again i have uncommon grace uh what is grace what is grace let me just try and de define grace grace is the undeserved favor of god grace is the undeserved favor of growth of god what is grace grace is the enabling power of god coming to man the enabling power of god coming to man grace can also be defined as divine help god stepping into your situation and giving you help like what we have read in the bible let us come into the throne of grace that we may do what we may obtain grace obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need so grace is divinity stepping to help humanity grace is divinity stepping to help humanity what is grace grace is undeserved kindness bestowed upon someone you don't deserve it uh, but it comes upon you it just comes upon you i pray that that shall be your portion grace is favorable disposition a grace is favorable disposition. I mean, God giving you qualities of mind and characters that are not in anyone else. Favorable disposition. Grace is divine element that guarantees achievement and progress in life. Grace is divine element that guarantees achievement and progress in life. Somebody is going to progress in the name of the lord you will progress whether the devil likes it or not i came to tell you by the virtue of the grace of god this divine element you will progress in the name of the lord grace is god bringing the best out of the worst situation any situation that is worse god can bring the best out of it and you know in, in the in this time the covid uh, season god can bring the best 
out of this worst situation. That is why we are praying for grace. The month of May shall be a different month for you because of the uncommon grace of God. Grace is your key to favor. Grace is your key to favor. Grace can also be defined as God qualification on the unqualified. Grace is God's qualification on the unqualified. You do not qualify, but God has decided to qualify you. Grace is the mightiness of God stepping into the weakness of man. Grace is the mightiness of God coming into the weakness of man, in your frailties, in your smallness, in, your, in, in, your, in, your, in, your, in the issues that are making you not to be seen. God can step in and when he comes, he comes in his mightiness. That mightiness does what? Makes you different. Grace is the ele divine element of God that makes great. It is the divine element of God that makes great so in other words you are becoming great when you have the grace of god what is great great grace is the element that beautifies christianity it is the element that beautifies christianity you know for too long people have thought that christianity is not a good life it's not a tantalizing life it's not a life that has beauty but i came to tell you it is the best life that you can live and especially when you're walking in grace when you walk in law it becomes very hard but when you walk in grace it is a beautifying element that beautifies your christianity may the lord beautify your christianity may people look at you and say we want to be christians may your life just exemplify the goodness of god you know there are people you look at and and you you want to say blood of jesus you don't want to be like them you want to just uh, bind them but there are people you look at and you feel new life is coming upon you that shall be your portion i said that shall be your portion play people that you interact with a new life you just feel new air because you're with them you feel like you can live long you shall be one of them in the name of the lord bringing beauty in this christian life that we are walking in what is grace what is grace? let me not just go ahead of myself let me define what is grace grace is god taking over your race you are racing and you are tired and things are hard. Then God decides to take over. He says, let me take over. That is what grace is. And he steps in to help you. He takes over your grace. What is grace? Grace is the divine push that makes you to win where you're supposed to lose. Where men have planned and they have said, you must lose in this area. So they have set things, they have set snares, they have said, you will not go anywhere. They have said, you must fall. They have said, you must not go ahead. But I came to tell you, when grace steps in, when grace is injected in that particular situation, guess what? Where you are supposed to fail, you are going to win in the name of the Lord. Your people will see you winning, whether they like it or not. If you believe it, shout and say, Amen. What is grace? Grace is the element, divine element, given to you to disappoint your enemies. Grace is a divine element given to you to disappoint your enemies. Now, understand this, understand this, that we have common grace. Common grace is grace that God gives to everybody. He gives to everyone. Everyone can receive this grace. It is grace that is uh, already given, given to anyone. And everyone, whether they acknowledge God or not, that is common grace. Because there is no one who can survive without grace. So grace is given to everybody, whether they acknowledge God or not. Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, the Bible says, He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good. He causes his son to rise and the sent rain, both to the righteous and the unrighteous. So grace is the common grace, is grace that is available to everybody everyone that is here is 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 available too but tonight we are talking about uncommon grace what is uncommon grace this this is not grace that is available to everyone uncommon grace means unusual you know that word uncommon means unusual something that takes you out of the ordinary 
Uncommon means something that makes you exceptional, something that makes you peculiar. Do you know we are peculiar people? Something that makes you uh, to, 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 to live a life that is not normal. You are, you are getting into a place that is not normal. So when we are talking about uncommon, it means it is not normal grace. It is uh, grace that takes you to a place where you shall be exceptional. Grace that takes you to a place where you live the ordinary. You are not like every Tom, Dick, and Harry. It is grace that's, that makes you singular and unique. Grace that beautifies you. Grace that makes you to cut a niche for yourself. Grace that makes you different. That is a grace that we are talking about tonight. And I want you to understand in this month of May, you will have uncommon grace. Can you shout after me and say, I will receive uncommon grace. Say it again, I receive uncommon grace. It is my prayer. That that shall be your portion that you will witness in your life and that your friends your enemies and and those people who are related to you they will see you and they will say this one has uncommon grace if that is your portion say i receive it in the name of jesus now understand this understand this that god has a veiled grace for all people god has a veiled grace to all people everyone that is there grace is available to you Grace is set not for special few people. It is available. This uncommon grace is available for all people. It is not for special people. It is not for those who are tall and not those who are short. It is not for those who say that now uh, I, I, I know people more than the others. It is not for any race. It is available. God has availed it to all people. Number two, I want you to understand that you must desire the grace. That desire, that longing, that thirst for it has to be there because God is not going to force it on you. You want to live a life of uncommon grace. I want you to know it is something you must desire. You must tell God, I want it. You have to go for it. Ask, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7 verse 7, that ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. You have to ask. You have to ask. Like what the Bible says in the book of James, is anyone lacking wisdom? Let him ask. So it is important for you to understand uncommon grace. You have to do what? You have to come to a place where you desire. And when you desire, you have to ask for it. You have to tell God, God, give Give me this uncommon grace. I don't want to behave like everyone. I don't have to. I don't want to have success like everybody. I want to have it in a different way. I want to have some uniqueness. I want to just be my, a person of my own caliber, my own kind. And when you talk to God and you tell God, "Give me this uncommon grace," you know what? This is a God that is generous. He's gonna release it to you. So it is important for you to know you need to tell God and to ask God to give you what to give you this uncommon grace then number three i wanted to understand this that you have to be ready to receive it uncommon grace is coming your way in the month of may i want to tell you uncommon grace is coming your way and one way of preparing for this grace is being ready to receive you have to receive this grace it's not going to step on you by force you have to set yourself ready to receive it's like when you carry a gift and you want to give somebody and they don't want to receive it what do you do you go away with it you cannot force it on somebody so it is with the uncommon grace. You have to be ready. You have to know that you have to perceive that there is this grace. And when you have to perceive that there is this grace, out of your perception, then you will have your reception. You are able to receive after perceiving. And when you receive after perceiving, it begins to work in your life. Because the grace that you don't receive cannot work for you. The grace that you don't receive cannot work in you. You have to receive it. You have to be ready to receive it. And that is why I want to encourage you, receive this grace. And then the fifth thing that I want you to understand is this, is that you have to acknowledge that you need grace. You have to acknowledge that you need grace. You know, there are people who walk thinking that they don't need grace. I don't need grace because I, am, I'm, I have this number of degrees. I don't need grace because I have this amount in my banking account, in my bank account. I don't need this grace because I have this position. I know so and so. I don't need grace because I'm this and that. I want to tell you, regardless of a position you are, 
and what you have. You need grace and you have to acknowledge that I need grace. I cannot survive without grace. I cannot move on without grace. I cannot do anything without grace. I totally am in need of this grace. And you need to tell God, God, I need your uncommon grace. In fact, at this point, just tell him, Father, I need your uncommon grace over my life in the name of Jesus. You have to acknowledge that you need this grace. This grace makes you to be different. This grace does great things in your life. Why do you need this grace? Why do you need this grace? You need this grace because number one, you can only be saved by grace. You can only be saved by grace. The salvation that we have received has come to us because of the grace of God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, the Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So you see, it is not by works that you are saved. It is not by works. It is not that you are good. It is not that you came from a family of those who are born again. It is not that you came from a family of preachers. That is why you say now, I am born again. No, Christianity is not that, that, that you are born uh, in, a, in a born again family. Therefore, it automatically makes you born again. No, you have to confess your sins and you have to confess uh, Jesus Christ as the Lord and personal Savior of your life. Then what happens? Then salvation comes in you by grace. You receive that salvation by grace. And you know, that is not the end. It is the life that we live is a journey of salvation. The life that we live is a journey of salvation. You are saved from the sins that you did. You are redeemed from those things. And then as we keep on walking, we also experience the salvation of God. He saves us from things and he saves us from the enemy and from the works of the evil one. We receive that salvation. And then the last day as we come, God is going to do what? He's going to take you and save you from tribulations that are going to come in the last day because he's going to take his church. And, and when we shall be caught up in the air, my prayer is that that shall be your salvation too, that both of us are going to meet in the air as we are caught up by God, being taken away from the hardship and, and the, the trials and the hardships that are coming on earth as we join Christ and then we shall come back with him again to reign. That is also a form of salvation. So it is important for you to understand these things happen by grace, not by works. Don't say, you know, I am good. I am like this. I am like that. You know, there are people who think because you, you say because sister so-and-so uh, was caught fornicating, me I'm better than that. No. You don't say because sister so-and-so has three children out of wedlock. Me I was married a virgin. I am better than that. No, 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 no. You don't say in my marriage, you know me, I have never, I have never committed adultery. I've been with my wife for 45 years and, and therefore I am better than brother so-and-so because he has been caught in three adulteries. No. Why? Because it is by grace. It is by grace. Even, by the way, when you keep puffing yourself with, with pride that I have done this, I am more righteous than the, the other one, I am not, I'm not in this sin. You are like the Pharisee who was praying and he was telling God, God at, at the wailing wall, I'm not like the other one. I am not like the other one. I tithe my tithe. I do this. I do that. And I'm not like the other one. Guess what? His prayers were not received because sometimes pride, a lot of pride when it comes in your life, it makes you miss the grace of God. The life that we are living in, salvation is by grace. We shall enter the kingdom of God by grace. You remember the thief on the cross. Remember that thief on the cross when he cried and he said, Master, have mercy on me. And you know what? Jesus said, tonight you shall be with me. The guy got an expressway to heaven tonight from travel direct to heaven. Don't ever look at someone and say, you know, this one is not going to go anywhere. The grace of God is changes the narrative. When someone is able to access it and, and seek God in repentance, there are many things that happen. So you need God's grace. You need the salvation of God coming in your life. It will help you. So we are saved by salvation. And my prayer is this, that you will experience the salvation of God in your life because of the grace of God. If you believe me, shout and say amen. Number two, you need God's grace because we receive gifts by the grace of God. You are gifted by the grace of God. 
You are totally gifted by the grace of God. It is not that you are born in a family of those who sing. So even you, you can automatically sing. There are people who are born in a family of, of those who sing, but they cannot sing. There are people who are born in a family of footballers, and they never become great footballers. You think because your brother is a great footballer, even if you are born twins, that you want to also play like, play like your brother. Sometimes it becomes very hard because your brother can get can be a professional footballer and you, you cannot. You cannot be in any team. In fact, your team cannot be known anywhere. It is not by the virtue that I was born and my father was a scientist, therefore I'm going to be a scientist. If that would be the case, then those who are born and, and their fathers were scoring A, straight A's, they would also become straight A's. But sometimes it, it is different. There is someone that is born in a family where the father was scoring straight E's. But by the grace of God, they, they start scoring straight A's. There are those who are born in a family where no one is a singer. But by the grace of God, they become singers. They begin to sing. There are those who are born in a family where there was nothing. There was no gift. But by the grace of God, they receive gifts. There are those who are born in a family there was no politician. But the, by the grace of God, they become great politicians. We are gifted by the grace of God. My praise that the grace of God is going to give you the gifts that you need in the name of Jesus. Jesus. If you believe it, shout and say, Amen. Now listen to this. Romans chapter 12, verse 6, the Bible says, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. We have gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Whether to prophesy, someone can prophesy, let us prophesy. According to what? To the proportion of faith or ministry, let us do what? Do ministry and teaching and doing all others. Why? Because it is grace that gives you gifts. My prayer is that every gift that you need to become great, may the grace of God allow you to access it in the name of Jesus. Any grace that you need to become great, may the grace of God access it. May you, by the grace of God, access it in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout and say, Amen. You know, you will always become a disgrace when you don't have the grace of God. Even when you are totally gifted. You know, your gift cannot work without the grace of God. Your gift is nothing without God's grace. There are people who become disgrace. They are disgraced in life. Even though they are endowed with gifts. But because they don't have the grace of God, they become disgraced. But when you have the grace of God, guess what comes your way? You are no longer disgraced because of the grace of God. May you receive this grace. I said may you receive it in the name of Jesus. You shall be gifted to be all that God wants you to be because of the grace of God. Number three, why do you need grace? You need grace because it is grace that makes you. It is grace that makes you. You cannot be any useful to anybody if you do not have grace. It is the grace of God that makes you. When the grace of God comes upon you, guess what? You become great because of the grace. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 7. Wherefore, I was made a minister. I was made a minister. Not by people, not because I was born into a ministry family, no. But according to the gift of grace of God, given unto me, by the grace of God, you become a minister. He was made a minister. You know, grace makes. Grace makes. It is the grace of God that can make you. I am whom I am because of the grace of God. Paul says, it is grace that makes you cannot be anything without the grace. Grace can make you. Grace can give you the age over everyone else. Grace can make you to have a niche over anybody in business. Grace can put you on top when people thought you should remain at the bottom. It is grace that makes. Grace is better than age. Grace is better than age. You can have many years but not achieve anything. But you can have few years and achieve great things. Why? Because grace is better than age. It is grace that beautifies your age. Your years on earth are beautified by the grace of God. You achieve because of the grace, not because of age. And that is the reason why I feel like prophesying to somebody. Don't wait until you are 40. That is when you're saying it's going to happen to me. No, 
at your age of 23 you can own that company at your age of 18 you can own that house at your age that you have you can be anything you can become anything why because the grace of God is better than the age in your life it beautifies your grace it beautifies your age it gives you it makes you to become something that is different it infuses you with the power to make it and you begin making it in life not based on your age not based on how old you are you remember Jesus when he met uh, with the priests and the, and, and, the, and the people of the law at, at age 12 in the temple the Bible says that he reasoned with them and they asked themselves what manner of wisdom does this boy have he reasoned with them the, the father and the mother found him reasoning with people in the temple at age 12 I came to tell you that age is nothing age is just a number you need the grace of God you need it it doesn't matter what is happening it doesn't matter where you are it doesn't matter what people are saying age is just a number age is just a number that is what I want to tell you God will give you grace and when uncommon grace comes upon you you can be able to achieve anything regardless of your age you will receive anything may you receive power I said may you receive power to do more than your age may you receive power to do more than the number of your years and may you receive power to do what the years cannot do you know there are those also who need to receive power to receive what their years what their age cannot do for example like Sarah she was too old in fact she says she laughs in her heart and she said me at my age will, will I and my husband is also too old will I really enjoy anything he's, he's talking about the, 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 the pleasure of sex will I really enjoy it? not about conceiving will I really enjoy this and you know what she did not just enjoy but she conceived and she gave birth to a child oh even the medical complications that people say come because of your age were not in Sarah's life they tell you, you know what you need to give birth early because when you delay these complications are gonna come guess what grace is powerful more than that and it works for you in the name of the Lord so it's important for you to understand you need to receive grace and the grace of God will make you may it make you in the name of Jesus may it make you in the name of Jesus can somebody shout and say amen then I want you to understand that you are kept by grace say I am kept by grace you are kept by grace it is the grace of God that keeps you it is the grace of God that sustains you it is the grace of God that allows you to keep on living now you and I and I totally encourage you put on your mask put on whatever you can make sure you maintain your social distance do all you can to be safe but do you know it is the grace of God that keeps you. It is the grace of God that keeps you. If you don't believe it, think of the medics who have caught this disease and have died out of it. Think of them. Do you want to tell me they entered uh, the theater without covering themselves? Do you want to tell me they entered there without nothing? I am 100% sure they did all what they could. But guess what? Some of them caught the disease so it's important for you to know you are kept by the grace of God say I am kept by the grace of God in fact let me say it is the grace of God is gonna keep you your marriage is kept by the grace of God you don't experience divorce because you are good don't say you know me I know how to cook to cook for my husband I know how to treat him well I know how to dress I know how to take care of my wife I know how to buy gifts for they are necessary and they are good and you must do them but guess what there are those who have received all those things but they ended up divorcing why because it is grace that keeps your marriage you are kept by grace you are kept from an accident by grace you are kept from shame by the grace of God you are kept from death by the grace of God and it is important for you to know it is the grace of God that you need Ezra chapter 9 verse 8 the Bible says now for little grace for little space grace has given or has been showed upon us now for a little a little grace has been showed upon us and it has done what to leave us uh, a remnant to escape 
it has allowed us and it has been shot upon us and therefore we have a remnant to escape it is important for you to know it is the grace of god nothing it is the grace of god that helps you to do what to accomplish whatever you need to accomplish and you need god's grace everywhere that you are you need god's grace god told this man called Paul, when he went and cried and he told him, Father, please, God, Jesus, I mean, God, just remove this hardship. Remove this hardship. Because there was a thorn of flesh. And Jesus, and the word of the Lord came to him in 2 Corinthians, I believe, chapter 12, verse 7. Yeah, it says, my, my grace is sufficient, verse 9. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Where you are weak, the grace of God is sufficient. Where you do not have anything, the grace of God is sufficient. And I want you to know the grace of God is what you need. You cannot perform, you cannot make it without the grace of God. And you need that grace of God in your life. It is the grace of God that kept Paul, that he could not die of that thorn. The grace of God, may it keep you in the name of the Lord. If you believe it, say amen. The other thing I want you to understand why you need the grace, it is because grace makes you powerful. You become powerful because of the grace of God. Acts chapter 4 verse 33, the Bible says, and with great power, grace, the great, with the great power, gave the apostles weaknesses of the resurrection of the Lord, and with great grace upon them all, and with great power, gave the apostles witnesses of the resurrection of the Lord. And the Bible says, and great grace was upon them. You cannot have power and great power if the grace of God is not in your life. The great grace was upon them. And that is why with great power, they did what? They became witnesses. Why? Because the grace of God gives you power. Power is not only for casting out demons, but to be a witness, a validator, to show that God is able to do this. God can use you to show others what he's able to do. Grace of God allows you to overcome. And if you read the Bible, you realize that the grace of God kept them. The grace of God kept them. Verse 34, the Bible says, Neither was there any among them that lacked. The grace of God overcomes lack. It allows you to overcome luck. May you overcome luck in the name of Jesus. You will no longer be living in luck. I said you will no longer be living in luck. By the grace of God, you will overcome. By the grace of God, you will overcome. You will no longer be living in luck. By the grace of God, you will have it in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, for as many as were had possessions of land and houses, sold them, verse 34 of Acts chapter 4, sold them. So what does it do? The grace gives you the ability to overcome selfishness. There are people who are stingy and selfish. They cannot give anything. They keep and amass things for themselves, wealth for themselves. But when the grace of God is on you, things do not rule over you. They don't have dominion over you. These people are able to give land. They gave everything because of the grace of God. What does the grace of God help you? It helps you to become a blessing. They distributed to everyone. Verse 35. So the grace of God gives you power. It gives you power. And quickly, why do you need the grace of God? Because you achieve more by the grace of God. You achieve more by the grace of God. I want you to know you achieve more by the grace of God. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10. As I come to close, I want you to know, but by the grace of God, the Bible says, I am what I am. His grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I have labored more abundantly than they all. First Corinthians 15, 10. I have labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God in me. You know, the grace of God allows you to achieve more than others. It allows you to achieve more than others. It allows you to do more than others. There is no way you can have the grace of God in your life and then you keep on living without achieving. You have to achieve more than others. In fact, let me prophesy and tell someone that the grace of God is coming over your life and you shall do more than what others have done. Because the grace of God gives you the ability to 
to do more. You will do more than what your parents have done in the name of the Lord. You will do more than what your peers have done because this grace allows you to achieve more. May you receive that in the name of Jesus. You will do more than what others have done. You will achieve regardless of the environment that you are in. You will achieve more than what the environment allows you. Haven't you read in the Bible, Deuteronomy 28, the Bible says like this, that you shall be blessed in the city and in the countryside you will achieve more than what the environment allows you. Why? Because the grace of God made me to do more. That is what Paul says. Not I, but by the grace of God. I have done more. Not I, but by the grace of God. May you do more than what others have done. May you achieve more than what others have done. May you have uh, things that, that no one else has done because God allowed you to achieve. There is no way you can be lazy when the grace of God is in you. It pushes you to do things. It pushes you to achieve things. You become an achiever. You become a trailblazer. You become somebody that achieves some things. If you believe it, shout and say amen. Shout again and say amen. And I want to close by telling you this. Grace is responsible for destiny packaging. Grace repackages your destiny. You are looking at me and you're saying, Pastor, what are you saying? Let me read Galatians chapter 1 verse 13. It's a long portion, but I wanted to read. It says, like, it says like this, For you have heard of my previous ways of life in Judaism. Paul is saying that. How I intensely persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my father. But, you know, changes everything. When God, who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach among the Gentiles. And my immediate response was not to consult with any human being. You know, it is important for you to know there is a but in your life. When the grace of God comes upon you, your life changes. So Paul says, you know how I persecuted the church. What I did against the church. How I advanced. I was even doing more than what others are doing. But when the grace of God was revealed, everything changed. You know, God is able to repackage your destiny. He's able to repackage how things are. He's able to change how things are looking. Ah, I'm getting excited about somebody today because a repackaging is coming. A repackaging is coming. A repackaging for somebody is coming in your life tonight. Maybe they have laughed at you and they have said you're nothing and they have said you're a non-entity. This is a word from the portico of heaven. God is able to repackage your destiny. He's repackaging you tonight. Paul was the one persecuting the church, but Paul wrote more than every other apostle concerning the church. Most of the books we read in the New Testament were done by Paul. Why? Because God is able to repackage. He's able to change. May you receive that repackaging. Where you are a failure, God is repackaging you tonight. You shall become a, a victor in the name of Jesus. Where you are going down, God is repackaging somebody tonight and you will begin going up in the name of Jesus. In fact, let me tell you, where you locked, God is repackaging. There is a repackaging coming over your life. A repackaging coming over your spirit, over your family. Those who laughed at your family, they can no longer have the last laugh. You will have the last laugh because God is repackaging you. If you believe me, say I'm receiving a repackaging. Say, I'm receiving a repackaging. God is in the business of repackaging you. That is why we have people who are prostitutes. Now they are preaching God's word. A repackaging. That is why we have people who are failures. But God has changed everything. Now they are having it bad. I mean, greater. Because God can repackage. That is why we have people who gave up. But God repackaged. Now they are the ones who are giving strength to somebody. I came to tell you, what is it that you're saying? Me 
I am done. It is over about me. No, it is not over about you. God is able to repackage you. If he repackaged an old woman of 90 years and gave her a new womb, he can do it for you. He can repackage you. If he repackaged an old man and made him a son, I mean a father of a real son, he can repackage you. If he repackaged Mephibosheth who had been thrown out and away and nobody liked him and he was brought back and what belonged to the father was taken away from, 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 from a servant and brought to him. I want you to know he can repackage you. There is a repackaging that is coming your way and it comes by the grace of God. May you receive it tonight. I said may you receive it tonight. May you receive it tonight. You are no longer the one boy that they used to know because God is repackaging you. Can you say I'm receiving a repackaging. I want you to know God is going to repackage you. Where people look down on you because of the repackaging of God in a few days, you will drive by and they will wonder what happened. You will say, God repackaged me. God is able to repackage someone by the grace. That one that failed in marriage, God is able to repackage you. That you can become a great husband. You can become a great wife because God is able to repackage you. Receive that repackaging. If you're there, I want you to know, by the grace of God, it is by the grace of God we are who we are. Grace takes away disgrace. And this month of May, you are receiving grace in the name of Jesus. You are receiving grace in the name of Jesus. I want you to just stand if you can or kneel wherever you are. I want to pray with you. Say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Let your grace, Let your grace be, multiplied be multiplied in my life. In my life. Let, your grace Let your grace be multiplied, be multiplied in, my life. in my life. Now take some time and pray. Father, we decree and declare. Let grace, according to the book of Romans, be multiplied, be multiplied, be multiplied in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Let grace, according to the book of Romans, chapter 5, be multiplied in our lives in the name of Jesus. Pray for grace. Pray for that 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 grace. In the name of Jesus. Pray for that grace. Pray for that grace. Let God do it for you. The grace that multiplies, the grace that multiplies, let it abound in your people tonight. The grace that multiplies, let it abound in your people tonight. The grace that repackages, let it abound in your people tonight. Yedo Sakata Radiaba, Reste Ketosa, Muka Degada, Liko Baguda, Mose de 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 Mosiga, Lacun Sakuria Zela, Lezepe Zeloziga, Minde Zela, Lizebe de Boriala, La. I pray for my viewers tonight. Let them access the grace. Let them access the grace in this month of May. Let them access the, access the common grace that is able to repackage them. Repackage them. Repackage them, oh God. That one that was a failure. Father, by grace, change their lives. Change their lives. Change their lives. Change their lives. In the name of Jesus. Do it for them, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for doing it. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you shout and say amen? amen. We are continuing praying. Just say after this. Say after me. Say my father. My, father, my fighter. My fighter. Anything, anything. That is. That has a wrong mastery. That has a wrong mastery. Over my life. Over my life. That has dominion. That has dominion over, my life, over my life. That is hindering me. That is hindering from accessing the grace of God. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. In the name of Jesus. Of Jesus. Anything. Anything. That has negative mastery. Negative that has mastery. negative dominion negative over, my life. over my life. Let it be broken, it be broken. In, the in the name of Jesus. I access, I access 
the grace of God. Now take some time and seal that prayer. We access tonight every walk of the devil, every yoke of the evil one that has any mastery of our life, of our lives, of our walk. We come against it now. We come against it now. We break it right now. We destroy it right now. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare Zogadeda, La Grosa Giba Reda, in the Noza de Setere Ketarora, Lise da Mozica, in the Namosete, in the name of Jesus. Let it be destroyed. 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 Let it be destroyed upon your people, God. I pray tonight, whatever was hindering them, let it be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Do it for them, God. Do it for them, Father. We thank you for that. For you have done it. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Can somebody shout and say amen? Amen. Say amen. Amen. I want you to pray this last prayer. Say, my father. My father. My fighter. My fighter. I pray. I pray. That great grace. That great grace. Will usher me. Will usher me. Into the realms of power. Into the realms of power. Let grace, great grace. Let great usher grace. Usher me. Usher me. Into the realms of power. Into realms of power. I receive power. I receive power. By the grace of God. By the grace of now God. Now take time and seal it. In the name of Jesus. Of Jesus speak, Lord, we receive power. King of glory. To defeat the, the works of the evil the one. The works of the devil. The Lord. We receive Making power access, over witchcraft. Lord, we receive power over power. everything. Because of the grace Jesus, of God. Lord, I, I pray for your people, power. God. Let, power Let them receive power. power. Let them receive power. Let them receive power. Let them receive power now. In the name of Jesus. Let them receive power now. In the name of Jesus. I pray for that mama watching. I pray for that lady watching. I pray for that gentleman watching. I pray for that child watching. I pray for the sick person watching. Let them receive power. Grace, power to overcome Lord. anything let that has put them in captivity. Lord. Let them receive let it now in the name of Jesus. Grace, Thank you, Father, for doing it. Lord. We bless you and we exalt you. In Jesus' name, we pray and we believe. I wanted to shout and say amen.